Hello everyone, Ostian is at the microphone again. Well, this is a new video about the factory, which, by the way, will be very related to the previous video. So, if you haven't seen it yet, watch it first to fully understand the material. So, after the previous video, a lot of different players started writing to me in private messages with suggestions and ideas on how else to develop this topic. Some ideas were a rehash of existing ideas, some were just not very good. Well, something made me make this video. And, honestly, this video was not planned at all. And it only happened because I was sent a screenshot of a drawing in a private message. It was a conveyor of this shape. And when I saw it, I thought, what if I don't just make random photos or patterns, like in the previous video, but use something familiar, something that is already in the game. For example, make factorial pictures of conveyors. Quote. Yes, not just conveyors, but to build them so that, by analogy with pattern pictures, they could be joined with each other, so that there were both vertical and horizontal conveyors, so that there were turns and even more. Make dividers, manipulators, chests, completely different buildings that could not only look harmonious with each other, but also be joined. Agree, the idea probably deserves to be implemented. And thus, such a pack of pictures was made, where there are conveyors with an orientation up or down to the side, that is, left, right, and, of course, corner connections on each of the four sides. There are also dividers here. Again, horizontal and vertical manipulators, both long and short. The rotation of these manipulators is implemented, well, and, of course, different buildings, for example, chests, assembly machines, power lines, laboratories, batteries, solar panels and so on. And, of course, you can see what all these buildings look like in a separate guide at the link in the description. And, yes, continuing the thought, I can see questions and comments in advance. Hello, Austin, why did you do all this? There are special sites for this. Quote, and yes, in general, you will be right. We partially talked about them in the previous video, and we will talk about them below. But if there were no special problems with the pictures and it is quite simple to make such pictures, then with the buildings from Factory it was far from the case. And, firstly, there were three main such problems. The first problem is the grid, or the scale of the building. The second is the overlapping of drawings one on top of another, that is, the overlapping of drawings on top of each other. Well, the third problem is compliance with the color palette. Well, now let's go in order, how each of these problems were solved. The first problem is the grid or scale. Since all the pictures had to be such as to complement each other, and not be separate pictures, the first thing that had to be done was to bring them to the same size. And yes, if it were possible to simply take all the pictures and make them have the same resolution, it would, of course, be very chic. But, unfortunately, this is not the case, because we have both large and small buildings. For example, from the large ones these are assembly machines or furnaces, and from the small ones these are conveyors and manipulators. And, by the way, you should also not forget about such intermediate sizes as a divider, well, or LPA. It also seems to take two tiles, although in fact it is one. Thus, I decided to do the following. First, in order to have reliable sizes, I placed each building that I planned to make in the world. Then I screenshotted it, and thus I had the sizes of each building in order to then compare them and have the correct ratios of the buildings to each other. Well, then there is a more serious problem, which took a lot of time this is the overlay or overlay of drawings one on top of another. The topic itself is quite complex here to somehow explain it purely in words. Of course, I tried to explain it clearly in the previous video, where the tile textures were, but it turned out pretty shitty. So in this video I will try not to explain, but to show. So, if we look closely at the conveyor, we will notice that in its texture at the beginning there is a kind of protruding element. Well, and also at the end of the conveyor there are also two such protruding ones, well, let's say there are antennae. It is these elements that became a triangular stone to make everything simple and fast. And the problem here is that if we simply take the boundaries of the conveyor itself and want to fit it into some area, that is, in this case I took a chunk, then these very antennae will not allow us, unlike other buildings, to fit it into some boundaries. If you take such a picture and superimpose it on each other, as it was with tile textures, in each chunk, then it turns out that the joining of these very elements will not coincide with the beginning and end of the sprite. And for these reasons, it will look like this. Well, in practice, like this. So, yes, to put it mildly, not what you would like to see. And in order to somehow solve this problem, there are two ways. 
The first solution is to reduce the scale so that the boundaries of the future drawing are within one chunk. Well, the second solution is to try to somehow compare the two drawings so that they add up to one whole picture. And I kind of dismissed the first method almost immediately, because, yes, although it is simpler, many times simpler, in the end, because of these very bulges between the drawings, there will be obvious holes that will still need to be patched up somehow. And it looks, well, pretty bad. And, let's say, if you're going to do something, do it well. Well, and not just any old way. That's why I decided to go the second way and make a sort of mirror comparison of the beginning and the end. But during my tests I realized that it looks, well, let's say, extremely bad and the picture itself becomes very flat. Because of this, I decided to do the following. I took the drawing and manually extended an additional section. Thus, we got a sort of elongated drawing. And because of this solution, when building the drawing, part of this very drawing will overlap, and the area where the outline goes will correctly overlap each other. Although this solution has proven itself in practice, it turned out that, unfortunately, drawings can only be built in one direction. If these are horizontal conveyors, then from right to left, if vertical, then from bottom to top. Yes, alas, of course, there are inconveniences, but in the end we can achieve this result, which, in my opinion, looks very, very cool. And, unfortunately, such an implementation is not applicable to corner conveyors at all. Because if you mirror corner conveyors, the port of the conveyor itself will not change. That is, the section along which objects go from the inside out or from the outside in, depending on which way the conveyor goes. Therefore, in this particular case, nothing better came to my mind than to make a drawing for all four sides. Well, and, of course, duplicate them so that in total there are eight sides clockwise and counterclockwise. And also because we now have this protruding element, it covers part of the corner, and it looks, well, not very good. Therefore, there is a separate element here specifically for the outer part of the conveyor, where we have this transport mechanism itself. Well, the final, third problem is compliance with the color palette. Here I will make a small digression, and I think everyone understands that doing such a volume of work manually, building all this, especially if you can't draw, is, to put it mildly, a mediocre task. Therefore, the community has long ago come up with special sites that can translate a picture into a drawing. I already indirectly mentioned one such site in the previous video, but here we will talk more specifically. The first is the well-known Pick Store. A very simple and intuitive site. It does not have any special bells and whistles or settings. Here we are immediately greeted by a welcome window. Next is a button with which we can upload a picture. Then select the size and set what coverings we want to use. That is, backfill, stone block, concrete, reinforced concrete, well, and there are variations with hazard markings. We will talk about its features a little later after meeting the second patient. This is the Voxelcraft D trading post. Here, the functionality is much more advanced, and in addition to loading and resizing, there is also editing of the image itself, that is, brightness, light, shadows, contrast, saturation, temperature, hue, and even dieseling. Although, frankly speaking, I strongly advise against using it. Also, here you can choose not only coatings, but also buildings, solar panels, turrets, pipes, chests, walls, power lines and so on, which, as it were, on the map itself makes the picture more colorful and lively, but also difficult to pass. And yes, in the previous video I made exactly such pictures. And so it seems as if this site is much more advanced than the previous one. Well, yes, that's true. But PK Store has a trump card that greatly simplifies the construction of the type of sketches that I made. And I'm talking about the ability to bring two or more pictures to one color format. That is, if we have five coatings in the game, then all the pictures should have the same arrangement of these coatings. Something is responsible for the background, something for the outline, something for the borders, something else for some other. Each coating should be in its place, but with volume craft it was extremely difficult to achieve this effect, that is, the output image. Peepix Store has the ability to swap these same coatings, which greatly simplifies the creation of a drawing if something is set up incorrectly. No matter how you want to swap stone blocks and, say, reinforced concrete, just swap them. Very simple and convenient. So in this particular case, I used Pix Store more. But yes, Voxidecraft in its tasks, if these should not be the same pictures, is a cut above its competitor. So you need to know about such sites. Just in case, I will leave links to these two sites in the description under the video. Well, and also a link to this drawing, to the stone block factory, you can also find in the description under this video.
And this is where this video comes to an end. And if you watched it to the end, then you probably like what I do. And if you want to support me somehow, help me, then subscribe to the channel. You can also subscribe to the group in Telegram. And in the end, as always, I want to say a big, big thank you to those who watch me, comment, and, of course, see you soon. See you again. Bye-bye.